And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, brought to you live from Katowice, Poland. We are on to day two and group B here of the League of Legends tournament. And I am joined by some wonderful analysts and guests here on the expert desk. Deficio, D-Man, as well as Ubershouts. Guys, welcome to the desk once again. And, uh, you know, great day yesterday. It was long, uh, it was arduous, but there were some inter interesting games, don't you think, D-Man? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to give some deep insight today as well again i'm, I'm down with two yes. seconds getting on reddit I want to, uh, <laughs> just, just making a new account getting there it's, uh, starting off strong today. it's run, running out of time uh, i think he was calling you the guest obviously i'm the analyst i can accept that yeah so what was the insight um your hair is beautiful today thank you very much i think yesterday was very interesting uh i wouldn't necessarily call the games for great I think they were not the, great. They were, they were just uh, terrible, but, <laughs> but, lot, but it was a, a lot fun. Of mistakes. Yeah, it, fun, was, it was fun. fun. There was a lot of mistakes from the teams. We kind of expected it because Group A was considered a lot weaker compared to Group B today, where honestly every game should be at a very high level. There was a lot, there was a lot of moments. Origin should have won. TSM should have won the first yeah. game. Origin should have won the, the TSM best of three. Yeah. There was a lot of moments, that, but teams regret errors yesterday. Let's take a look at the teams that are competing. There is This is an eight-team bracket with four teams that were invited, four teams that qualified, and we've already seen two of them going home. Origin from European LCS, they've been knocked out, and the LCK number two challenger team actually placed above them with Royal Never Give Up and TSM advancing. Uh, and of course, we were looking at Group B today, uh, Uber. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting group, and everyone has been saying, and we can all agree, of course, that this is a definitely a tougher group. You've got SKT, you've got CLG in there as well, Chalku Reapers, Fnatic, all teams that could possibly go through, but of course everyone's eyes are on SKT. Yeah, definitely the case. Uh, and of course, whoever advances today will be playing against SKT and Royal Never Give Up. What was, uh, sorry, Royal Never Give Up as well as TSM. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your take on their performances yesterday as they qualified with one and two seeds? Uh, I mean, hard to see much from RNG. They didn't probably have to dig so deep. I thought the games were generally fairly clean once they got the measure of their opponents and closed them out fairly well. I think um, Xiaohu is quite scary uh, in, in the mid lane. I think he really creates uh, a lot of pressure on his own. And of course, we saw MLXG, uh, his farm dependent style on Graves, but then we also saw him go for some more early aggression. It's good to see he can play both styles quite well with different picks. Best jungler at this event is MLXG. Wow. You haven't uh, even seen Group B. It doesn't matter. Like, I've seen enough Don't coming I've seen enough coming into this tournament. I mean, maybe Swift could go up there and rival against him, but MLXG is just so good at playing, as you just said here, multiple different styles. He even picked the Gragas and he was the main engaged. That's yeah. what shut down Origin in that game. So I feel like RNG also didn't really show a whole lot, which is the scary thing, because they only got to play two fairly quick games, yeah. and now they're yeah. in the BO3 semi-final tomorrow. So they're definitely looking like one of their strongest teams. Just, yeah. to, just to qualify that, that's because two-time sport champion Bengi is not here, Blank is instead. So yeah. just well, to make sure it's the, the, we'll the threads don't no, shoot I think you MLXG's in the balls better than early on, mate. Oh, Bengi. Okay. Bengi is not let's, very good right now. Let's talk about SKT in a second. I just want to remind everybody how that bracket played out yesterday. Take a look at the Group A bracket with Royal Never Give Up winning those two best of ones in the upper half to qualify, and then TSM having that long run down through uh, the losers bracket. But they looked much better in the ESC Ever series at the end of the day, D-Man, what you actually cast. Yeah, yeah. Well. RNG themselves were absolutely convincing, by far and away the best team in that group, and maybe challenges for SKT. TSM themselves definitely stepped up. Bjergsen had some great games, uh, fantastic scores throughout the day, so he really stepped up when he needed to, and that's what TSM need. They need, yeah. they need double lift. Oh, obviously got that pentakill in the first game, and we we're like, okay, here we go, TSM <laughs> have arrived. Here we go again. The magic of IEM is going to happen for them, <laughs> and then they just shout the bed. And even more than TSM needing double lift, of course. When Bjergsen got on an assassin, his twisted fate, of course, was very, very strong. So good to see him when he's, you know, he can be more supportive now with yep. double lift being a strong player, but it's still nice to see him on the block and twisted fate making plays of his own. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to see if he can uh, get his hands on that tomorrow in the playoffs. Today, though, we are going to looking at Group B. Let's take a look at the schedule and just remind everybody how the format is going to work. The day will open with SKT taking on CLG in a best of one, then QG Reapers versus Fnatic in a best of one. The winners will face off in that BO1 winners match and qualify the number one seed. Then the remaining two series of the day will be best of threes. And to uh, hit on what uh, D-Man was talking about a little bit earlier, Bengi is not here with SKT. They have brought Blank. Um, Bengi struggling somewhat in the current meta. Blank, but more of a solo queue player, but more of a carry style jungler, if I can yeah. use that well, term. Struggling as well. Yeah. I mean, I felt like SKT probably didn't have a great option for the jungle or for the jungler they wanted to bring. But then if you have a new guy, a rookie coming in, 
gave him some experience playing, first of all, not in Korea, but actually travel to Europe. This is his first international first event. First international yeah. event, play on the, on the stage. And I think it's more for experience, but also because I feel like SKT are trying to just find that replacement for Binky long term. Might not happen in a week or two, but that's why they're bringing him. Yeah, I mean, Blank, we saw him briefly uh, in the LCK. He got subbed in at, at one point for Benki, and he didn't really have much more of an impact. Also, fun fact, he has subbed in for Starhorn Royal Club before. So he has a little bit of experience here, but that stylistic difference between him and Benki will be very telling in how mm. SKT utilizes that. Yeah, but if we're going to go down to the nitty-gritty, they're up against CLG, and they are better in every single lane. I mean, that's, that's the long and short of it. Because the, the biggest part is, for COG, Darshan can do his split push thing. It's worked against the Mortals last week. It works against a lot of teams. But he's up against Duke in that top lane. Yeah. Well, well assuming that obviously, theoretically, he's up against Duke in the top lane, obviously lane switching, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, their bottom lane is better. Their mid lane is better. The top lane is better. Jungle, we don't know about it. You know, X Smithy might, might well be better than Blank. Um, you would theorize that, obviously, SKT, you know, the coach Goma, he knows a lot about this game. Yeah. yeah. He's won two world championships. He knows what he sees in a play. He knows what he wants from a player. So clearly there's something there that he sees or the team sees that is very good in this guy, and they're going to try and bring it out in him in this tournament. And, and let's talk about X Smithy as well. We, it's a bit of an unknown factor, him going up against Blank, previously a Cinder Hulk jungler, favoring those sort of tankier champions. But then when he, we saw him go towards a Nidalee against Team Impulse in the NALCS, he went 506. So we're seeing more diversity from him. And of course, the Udi we picked up twice in week seven of the yeah. NALCS. We know he's been spamming and solo queue recently as well. So we can definitely look out for that pick today. Yeah. 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 X Smithy is actually, I just want to jump in on this because I, I agree 100%. I think he's going to be kind of the wild card a bit for CLG. Mm. If people haven't really watched NALCS last year, he was getting a lot of flame, honestly, for his performance. But this year, yeah. he's been very solid. He has good picks. And he most likely will have the advantage against Blank, at least for an opening game, because Xmithy also has quite a lot of experience. Yeah. He's synergized with his team. Yeah. And CLG's playstyle is all about camp, top lane. So it's no longer a 1v1 between Duke and Dashaun. It's going to be a 2v2 with the junglers involved. And that's where CLG might be stronger. So, gentlemen, the players are just about ready for the player walk-in. So let's meet uh, SK Telecom T1 as well as Counter Logic Gaming. Hello, everyone. What's up, Katowice? Warm welcome from me as well to day two here of the League of Legends Championship and it is time to meet our teams for our very first battle in Group A. First up, the reigning champions of the North American LCS, it's Counter Logic Gaming! And next up, their opponents from Korea's LCK and two-time world champions, SK Telecom T1. Thank you very much, Sharks. There you have it. Counter Logic Gaming taking on SK Telecom T1. Players are just about getting ready on stage. So was the analyst desk. <laughs> go, so was the analyst desk. We Hello. have uh, Broto Crepo to help us out with uh, picks and bans here. And as the players are taking their seats, it'll be SKT on the blue side. Counter Logic Gaming will be on the red side as far as the draft is concerned. So let's jump straight into it. Uh, 6.3. What are we expecting to see? We know Smith, he's got a history with Gragas. We saw it a little bit towards the end of the day. Yeah. Do you think it's fair to say Nidalee was not as impactful as maybe we were sure. expecting? I mean, Nidalee is a, a jungler where, first of all, you need a carry jungler to play it. And also you need a team evolved around very early game focused compositions where you can push in lanes, create a lot of tempo with Nidalee and she can invade in herself. So I understand how certain teams won't really favor it too much. 
CLG is probably going to be the same. I think we're going to see Udi and Gragas probably valued above it. But also, also because they want to just play a bit more split push. Yeah. Udia can actually offer split pushing with CZ Rod. And, and not even split push, they're also like, Nidalee can't really accelerate any laner uh, mm. by the merit of ganking. She can get a, a CS lead in the jungle and then I'll you have bigger strength than their opponent and then kind of put the pressure on the map. But if you straight up want to snowball a lane, like say Darshan, split pushing on Fiora, yeah. then you're going to want the Gragas, then you're going to want the Udi just to storm into lane, burn the flash, return then. And that is obviously the low hanging fruit that Seal is yeah. going for. They're looking for Fiora and to split push. Well, we'll see. But it's a strategy that generally works for them. We, we will see if they can pull that off and we'll show you exactly what is at stake. Let's take a look at the Group B bracket. Show you the run that CLG or SKT will have to make if they want to make the playoffs. And of course, once SKT and CLG have finished their game, QG Reapers will take on Fnatic. You guys know the system by now. BO1's in the upper bracket, BO3's in the lower bracket. Before we carry on talking about both of these teams, I do think we need to introduce SK Telecom and exactly how they've qualified for the Intellectual Masters World Championship. Reigning League of Legends World Champions are hungrily eyeing the Intel Extreme Masters crown to add to their trophy cabinet. The landscape of Korean League of Legends is ever-changing and SKT find themselves a few games away from the top of the LCK rank. However, they are running with the pack and will surely relish the chance to again test themselves against foreign opposition. The 2015 League of Legends World Championships may be behind us, but make no mistake. SK Telecom T1 are as ferocious and masterful as ever. I really think our analyst desks need some of those Korean poses as well. Whenever you see the teams, you know, they have the strong <laughs> arm, you know, <laughs> coaching mm, tiger, yeah. dragon kind of feeling. And I think that could definitely level up um, analysis across the board. <laughs> Well, we'll see if we can pull this off a little later today. Uh, just to remind everybody of the players, Duke in the top lane, Blank in the jungle, Faker, Bang, and Wolf. So Duke obviously replacing Marin, has been with the team all of the spring split. Blank has replaced Bengi, uh, has played a couple of games. Few things to mention with regards to SK Telecom. Obviously, the defending Riot Games World Champions from 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, they were invited to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, and they are currently sixth place in the LCK. Yeah. with a series record of five wins and four losses. That's not something that really I ever expected to say, but the team is still trying to find their identity with losing Morin, who was a big impact on the team. Yeah, it's kind of weird because when it comes to SKT right now, there are quite a few issues you can highlight. I like to look at the pick and ban phase as a big issue for me. I, I don't like the way they're drafting at the moment. Um, Duke obviously likes to play a lot of split pushing carries up top, but he can also play, pick tanks. And then, in my opinion, the 10 picking these really low damage comps, or like where it's just like purely on Bang to like be the main carry. And if he gets shut down early, they do nothing. How much of an impact is Blank in the jungle coming in for Bengi uh, affecting the team and, and whatnot, uh, Crepo? I think at this point, though, it can't do any harm. I mean, it was clear that either Bengi was struggling or SKT was struggling to really make Bengi work. Um, we had the, the double Udyr game uh, right before Udyr kind of became meta. Mm -hmm. But no ZZ uh, Rod for him, no so it kind of ruins the purpose. Also just completely didn't like play to the champion's strengths and, yeah. and was picked at a very weird time. So yeah, it just didn't make much, much sense. And, and Bengi is such a, generally such a smart player, so it's kind of sad to see him underperform. But I think it's a, a good tryout for SKT because obviously this tournament, yes, it's an offline tournament, but it just gives them a chance to test out a new player without impacting their run in the LCK because obviously they still want to finish mm -hmm. higher because they have such a prestige to uphold uh, over in Korea. But with Bengi, if, if we think back to Season 4, when SKT were also struggling for, for most of the year and didn't even qualify for the World Championship, Bengi had the same issues. Yeah. When it's a carry jungle meta, you know, very mechanically gifted players who shine, Benki doesn't do that well. Again, he's relying on vision control, on being smart, knowing where to gank, and that doesn't really fit too much in this meta compared to what some of the other junglers can do. But also, I, I think it's also on SK Telecom as a team, because after losing Marin, and he was obviously the, the captain of this lineup, I also feel like the shot calling has really gone downhill for, for this team. It's yeah. no longer TP as synergy smooth. is gone. Yeah, the TP synergy is not there with Duke yet. He's obviously a very solo focused player. Very often he's trying to adapt to the team, but overall shot calling, if one guy gets caught out, you get like this kind of panic running through the team where suddenly everyone doesn't really know where to go and then suddenly they get caught out. That's why they lost to Africa. 
It's two Afri weeks ago. Africa CS. Yeah. They just didn't lose to Africa. Just Stop. like. Oh, sorry. Next Africa week. CS, next week they yeah. play yeah. Russia. You know. And yeah. No, America, no, no. Gentlemen, just... gentlemen, we'll carry on talking about the uh, run of bad luck and run of misplays that we're seeing from SKT. Before that, though, their opponents, Counter Logic Gaming. We also caught up with them to find out how they've made it here to Poland. IEM San Jose was one of CLG's first outings without their mercurial marksman, Doublelift. Fortunately for the NALCS Summer Split Champions, Stixay acclimatised well, and with Huhi moving to the mid lane, CLG were able to secure clean wins against the Unicorns of Love and the Junior Green Wings. Now, at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championships, CLG have the opportunity to take revenge against Origin for shutting them out of the IEM San Jose final and a chance to renew their claim to the title as the best team in North America and even beyond, up against some of the fiercest opposition in League of Legends esports. That's right, taking second place at San Jose, CLG We've got uh, a revamped roster working on their performance here, and there's some big questions regarding who he and Stick say and how well they're going to perform on the international stage. Let's take a quick run through the entire list: Dashan, X Smithy, who he, Stick say, Aframu, and there's a good mix of sort of young players to international stage as well as experienced veterans. Um, Crepo, what's your take on CLG's chances, considering all of the questions around who he's champion pool and Stick say's ability to? really shine in the AD carry role. I mean, you can see that Aframu uh, or Stick Stay is, is learning right now. Uh, he's in high school of the Aframu school of hard knocks <laughs> in the laning phase. So his, his laning is improving, but he needs kind of college level education to really go up against Wolf and Bang. Um, so that's going to be rough. But overall, I, I think CLG plays seemingly as a smart team. Like some of the, the shit decisions they made in the <laughs> Immortals game, I liked. The fish is like, nah, you're wrong. They're all bad. This is all bad. No, 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 no. So Who's driving those decisions? Is it Darshan or is the team just saying, team, hey, we have both. this guy, we work around it? So when Darshan is pushing in one lane and he's kind of getting pressure back, then he will back out, obviously, and then the other lane kind of goes forward. That's the point where most teams are at. But then one side dies and gets caught. CLG kind of did that dance really well going back and forth, and I was kind of impressed to see that. And I think stylistically that could do well in this group. Not against SKT. Sadly, uh, CLG got the shorter straw, and they play against SK Telecom here. But against QG and Fnatic, I think their style could uh, wreak a lot of havoc. And that's why I think I project them to be second in this group overall. So my problems with CLG is, first of all, they play one style. That is split push. That is like the style they play. Um, and now you're taking on a top laner like Duke, who's a very, very strong top laner. And SKT obviously knows how CLG is playing, so you can draft around it. You can either ban away like Fiora, Quinn, these picks here, or you can set up a counter pick for your own top laner potentially. I wonder if CLG can pull this style off against better teams like SKT. That's obviously the question. Yeah, we're about to find out. Another thing is, when it comes to this communication, you talked about, you know, split pushing, it's all about communication. Because, you know, like, Dashawn will, will communicate, I can push up now, you know, I can kill this guy, or I can pressure him. So, like, you push forward in mid lane, you push forward in top lane with the Udi or whatever. Like, it's all communication across the board. And I feel like they have good communication. The problem is, if you look at the Immortals game, they got caught out, like, three or four times. The group of four, with Stixay and Huhi, they got caught out multiple times in a game that technically should have been snowballed super, super easily, because the Fiora had, like, four kills in the early game. So I like to start, Xmithy will camp for Dashawn every single time. I like that. If it pays off, he gets a lot of kills. But then you got to be able to run it smoothly. Just split push. Don't go into a team fight. Don't get caught out if you're the Ezreal. You don't need to do anything. Just push. And that's where they're going to get punished if they do these mistakes today. All right, we'll see how clean they can play because TSM showed a lot of mistakes yesterday. Also not necessarily playing the map as well as they should have. You can see the players just getting the final uh, technical setup on stage. They are all in the lobby. But I want to mention that SKT is actually not played on 6.3. Uh, they had been sort of offline for two weeks, so to say, and uh, Monty was talking backstage with how it's quite difficult to scout them. Not only have they brought Blank in, mm -hmm. sort of a new player, relatively speaking, they've not played on 6-3, not that there's major changes, but it complicates matters when you know how, dare I say, easy to read CLGR. 
Yeah, but CLG, I mean, their style, they know that their style is easy to read. Right? That's the same thing in NLC. NLC has no team is surprised. Oh my god, <laughs> CLG split push this today. God, preparation out of the And window. yet Immortals pick Soraka against it. Probably yeah. the worst pick against the split push. But that, that, is just, that is just Immortals being a little bit sure. overzealous. Yeah, yeah. But I think what, what works for CLG in the early game is because they seem to have good understanding of some of these macro concepts. Like mm -hmm. last year, they yeah. were really good at lane swapping. And that is textbook. Doesn't matter what team you play, what players they bring, lane swaps are lane swaps. And then the level 3-4 gank for Darshan, I feel it's one of the safest gank passes you can do, a early gank for top laner, because either it works uh, and you get your top laner ahead, or you meet the jungler there and it's a stalemate, or they counter gank you somewhere on the 2v2 bot, uh, top lane then, but or the 2v2 in the bot lane, but I think the, the value you get out of a top lane gank is just more in general, so I think that's always like kind of a fail-safe strategy. So yes, you will know what CLG will do in the early to mid game, but... CLG don't really get countered too much by you yeah. knowing that. So we'll find out what the teams decide to do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a brief pause. Unfortunately, the uh, connection-related problems we had yesterday are still present. We're going to just reboot the lobby and jump onto our failsafe, so hopefully we can oh. get this up and running again shortly. More time with Deficio. More time with Deficio. Um, oh, not, you don't mind, no. That's not I slept enough. Wow. I, can, I can take it right now. I have right, a, a little bit left in the tank. <laughs> Yeah, things got uh, interesting as the day went oh, on yeah. yesterday. Oh, yesterday was fun. As, as it went on. Um, we've talked extensively about SK Telecom and Fnatic. Uh, sorry, SK Telecom and CLG. We will get back to that a little bit later. Uh, for now, let's talk about the other two teams that are in Group E, uh, the Xiaogu Reapers as well as Fnatic. Ooh. Because these are not, this is, there's all these questions, right? Will CLG be able to perform against SKT? Will SKT with blank be able to show up? Will Fnatic continue to show really inconsistent yes. performances? that's all two other questions. Okay, so it's good to know. Uh, and then of course, Chagu Reapers, are they gonna be given a chance to just team fight their way through everything? Um, Where do we begin? Because yesterday, it felt like all the strengths and weaknesses of teams was clearly demonstrated. Yeah. Are you expecting the same today, Deficio? Um, Yes and no. I'm going to say no because I feel like two of the teams in this group doesn't necessarily have a pure playstyle we can look at. Like SKT and Fnatic mm -hmm. are both doing a lot of different things. They're trying out different compositions. We see like Protect Reckless, Go Late Game. SKT is doing the same sometimes for Bang. And then we also see like more like, oh, let's get a split pushing top lane all of a sudden. Obviously not from Fnatic playing purely tanks up top. CLG, they, may, they might should. Like they I may, mean, maybe, they have to revert to it. Yeah, that's what maybe. works for Fnatic in the past. You know, um, They have a bot lane or an AD carry that can actually play a uh, more sustainable approach to the game, but they seem to be more bot-oriented, mid-bot-oriented. Something a lot of people expected, you know? Um, Reckless trying to shine and Gams on those tanks, but I think uh, Fnatic may actually have to go back to, to the carbon copy style of, of last year and then just substitute Rainover and uh, Rainover for Spirit and then and Gamsu for, uh, for, for Huni there and just play the similar mm. style. Yeah, I mean, what I liked from Fnatic last week in the LCS, it was against Rocket, so obviously not the toughest team to play, but they actually completely changed. Day one, against H2K, they played Maokai, Gangplank, and Ezreal. Yeah. We're basically saying, we don't want to do anything for like 30 minutes. We want to get to late game, but we will lose everything. And what happened, they fell super far behind. And even when they tried to come back late, it wasn't enough because they were so far behind. And one mistake, game was over. Against Rocket, they changed. They played Callista, Thresh, bottom lane. They ran Lissandra mid lane with a Lee Sin in the jungle, and suddenly Fnatic were being active on the map. They were camping for Febivan in the mid lane, Reckless was winning his lane 2v2. That's the two star players on this lineup. It's Reckless and Febivan right now. It's not trying to feed Gamsu in any way possible. Spirit has been way too inconsistent to be considered a star player on this team. So I like that style a lot more. You can still pick a tank like Nautilus top, just don't invest resources into Gamsu early on. Depending on the champion. Sure, but if he's playing Nautilus yeah. or whatever amount, yeah, if he's playing on a tank, camp mid lane. I like to see that. I think Febivan is... He talks, he talks a lot about this in interviews, saying when he's ahead, he gets like so much more confidence and a great overview of what to do. But when he falls behind, he often struggles and he's like, where can I go? Where can I farm? I want to see him just get fed early on by Spirit. I think that's the way to go for Fnatic. Yeah, and Febivan has shown that he can... He's kind of what kept Fnatic in a lot of these games. Because uh, Fnatic, if you haven't really watched their games, they fell behind a lot and then crawled back into the games. Like they yeah. had that one win against H2K, where they had that early team fight where Forgiven was out of mana. They've had games where they're 10,000 gold down, even last year, like Punishing a couple of 5k gold down. And that's mostly by the nature of Febivan kind of split pushing and holding him in the game. And I do think he needs to be enabled more because he's a fantastic player overall. And in, in a meta where you can pick combos like the Sound or like the LeBlanc, Com combine that with a high damage jungler or just something that brings CC, you can camp the hell out of mid lane and just enable your right. jungler. Yeah, exactly. It sets up spirit. 
I feel like Spirit and Svenskern has been in the same position for, for Team Solar Maiden now for Fnatic, where you have this jungler who shines if you can play aggressive into the enemy jungle, if you can be a bit of a bully, and then you pick very slow scaling compositions around him and you kind of blame him saying, why don't you do anything in the early game? Well, you can't with these comps. I mean, Pick aggressive. And an example of where that works is just Trick from G2 Esports. Yeah, exactly. Because they play, Spirit and Trick are almost like stylistically carbon copies. The, the only difference is that um, Trick has the liberty to just AFK, for, well, not AFK farm, farm a lot more than his opposing jungler. And, and in the enemy Invade. Jungle and then leave Deep Vision because Perks is dumpstering mid, 1v1. Hybrid and Emperor not, never lo really lose their lane, yeah. 2v2, if not, they just straight up win it. And Kikis is what Fnatic want Gamsu to be, for example, a self-sustainable tank player that occasionally roll switches into like a Fiora. So gentlemen, I love the incredible depth that we've talked about Fnatic. Uh, I want to talk about the Chaogu Reapers a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, the players are busy getting into a new lobby that has been set up, and I will let you know uh, as soon as we get closer to picks and bans. But for Chaogu Reapers, some big question marks. Krepo, I know you really appreciate Swift Jungle. Oh, yeah. His and boy, apparently. His boy, yeah, I, I, every time I voice Swift. Swift. Last uh, year, QG should have been at Worlds, and Swift, um, I think he, he played that one series against Kakao, uh, where he just like, I thought he was better at the time, when everyone was like, oh, Kakao, Kakao, no, no, no. My boy Swift was the man to watch. Sadly, he is incredibly inconsistent. Uh, obviously, next to Swift, we have like top laner V, we have Doombi in the mid lane, Peko, and I, I, I want to ask you about that because you've got Perko as the ADC who's... Maybe, formerly TNT, for maybe, people that don't know. Formerly TNT, maybe even a more aggressive ADC than Uzi, which is a maybe a strong statement. But you've got the sub, like a substitute for Uzi. The man who no, Uzi said, is the substitute. Correct, yeah, correct. Yeah. But or rather has substituted Uzi. And Uzi was the man who went to Worlds and said, oh, we didn't win. Give me four more new guys. Let's do it all again. Like, it's mind-boggling to me. Well, the thing is... QG is not built around Uzi, like some of his former teams were, where it's like, okay, let's just pick super lane bully champions, win laning, face snowball the game. That's the way Uzi likes to play. He needs to win lane 2v2. His support more is a terrible laning support. So that's already, already a mismatch right there. I mean, he is, come on. He's not a good laning <laughs> or support. Or has an incredibly talent that is underrated. He has the ability to run into skill shots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Alistair and Braun Moore <laughs> is a fantastic player because he will do exactly what you need to do is eat up every skill shot, mostly in team fights. Sadly, I have to agree with Deficio. We saw him once in Morgana. I mean, that was RNG, awesome. And it was, yeah. So, when you, when, you, when you play Uzi, you play to win the early game. QG as a team does not play to win the early game. They play, honestly, fairly passive early on. They don't have the strongest 2v2 lane with Peko and more, mainly because of the support in there. So it's a lot more focused around actually warding very defensively, kind of farming up to lane. They like to freeze lanes a lot. Something, they fall behind something, every they game. They fall behind. <laughs> so when you pick Uzi, and he falls behind, he's not going to have the same impact we know from Uzi. That's why Peko has been a much better player, because he's a lot better at timing his entrance into team fights when he's behind and then picking targets with the rest of his team. Yeah, QG has this unique ability to find a new way to kind of fall <laughs> just a little bit behind in the early to mid game. But every time. Every time. But every time they enter a team fight, they, they surprise because they seem to be kind of, it's like one puppeteer. Uh, kind of or orchestrating that team fight because they all kite. Like you see, two guys go in and peel. A hook's coming to the AD carry. He won't flash because then more will actually step in forward. Three men kite backwards and then they turn on the exact same frame. Like they say, okay, turn around. This guy, he's dead. And it's so impressive to watch. Sadly, that's that's their only forte. Their macro, their lane swaps, their split push is horrendous. That's why stylistically, I'm hope to see QG face off against CLG because uh, it's a really cool stylistic mismatch and see which one comes out on top, I guess, yeah. where, which team is smart enough to use their style better. But in order for that to happen, either CLG would have to beat SKT and QG would have to beat Fnatic, or both of those teams would have to lose. And this is a difficult group to call. Uh, the players are starting to jump into the lobby, uh, just as an update for the viewers out there. And Deficio, if you were to start ranking the teams one through four in this group, mm -hmm. is it as simple as SKT CLG or SKT QG? Because realistically, Fnatic can't be that high up. No, I, I would put Fnatic last in this group just because they have been so inconsistent in the way they're playing. And I feel like the other three teams, or sorry, SKT actually has been super inconsistent, but they are SKT. So I actually expect a lot more from them than maybe some other people do. They had two weeks to practice now. You said it yourself, they haven't shown anything on this patch. I'm expecting them to show up big time. So I put them number one. I would say CLG and QG are super even for me as a number two, and then Fnatic gets the, the number three down the bottom. Okay, your, your math doesn't work out. There's four teams, but I'll, yeah, I'll take no, it. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll rank them together. The last team in a group is in third three. place. Yeah, there we go. 
They will have some plays. They Whatever. Make some Two mistakes. teams are tied at second place. You know what things, I mean. And things will happen. Yeah, things will the happen. The deficient way of things analysis. Things will happen. By the way, while you Wait, guys you, were going in this debate, why can't you tie teams anymore? Is that not a thing <laughs> anymore? Then they're on a tier. They're actually not in the ranking. Then. So, well, I, I ranked them. But while you guys were going into the debate, we had these crowd shots. I kind of like it that this place is filled up, so I just want to point that out. It is nice. Thank you very much to the guys here in Poland for coming out nice and early. The queue is massive outside. Uh, before I get Crepo's power rankings for the teams in Group B. Be careful with those. CLG uh, first. The team here at IEM actually caught up with Duke from SKT to talk about the World Championships. <laughs> I quite like that. When this event is over, I would like to head home a winner. Uh, Pre-tournament favorites, everybody's looking at SKT. Uh, you guys at home, uh, jump onto your phones, check out the Score Esports app, and keep you up to date with news, uh, scores, updates, gold graphs, picks and bans, everything of the sort. And uh, before that video, we were talking about power rankings. Uh, Deficio gave us his three-team uh, ranking of the group. A, B, C. Yeah, A, yeah. B, C. You know, just forget the next one. So, Crepo, if you can give us a complete list of four, that would be good. <laughs> CLG, CLG, no, I, CLG. I will give you the D2, Trevor. Okay. Um, uh, for me, first place is SKT. Then, uh, yeah, I just have to laugh. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> what can I say? How am I meant I to just keep like, a straight face? Um, no, SKT for me, probably because you just can't count it out. But then I, I rate CLG just slightly higher cause, because it's a double limb bracket and I think they will face off. They should be able to beat both QG and Fnatic. Um, that's in theory. I have this tweet out. I know when CLG inevitably lose. I mean, yeah, you're the biggest loser if they don't win this tournament. <laughs> yep. I'm prepared for that. I have, okay, a, I have, I have something ready for that. But yeah, um, CLG then, and then obviously QG over Fnatic, because Fnatic just, ah, it's just not clicking. Like, Too many we see, issues. We see a little improvement. So two weeks ago, last week, we saw this, this three or four minute phase from Fnatic, and it was absolutely beautiful. They, they invaded Spirit and Cly, worked together into the enemy jungle. The perfect reward spots. It sounded like Fnatic had finally learned what Deep Vision was, and then we all expected them to rotate to the other jungle to do the same thing after getting more wards. Somehow, the other team gets barren. I'm yeah. like, okay, I give up. So, so Fnatic is, is still in the building phase, and hopefully this tournament it's just scary. is a learning phase for yeah. them. Well, Double of Yesterday was very outspoken at the end of the day about how... Uh, how much the team had progressed on stage and actually in the bus back to the hotel, uh, he was talking to basically everybody and just saying that he felt the pressure, the international teams, the, the travel to Poland has really helped the team focus and find some synergy. Okay. Now again, it was against ESC Ever who they actually had technically already beaten early in the day, so you do have to take that into account. But it is something that, you know, trial by fire, you can find teams that come together and, you know, learn a lot more when there is all of this added pressure. I agree on that one, but it's the same for every team here, yeah. I feel. And I mean, especially for SKT coming into this, you just heard Duke talk about it. We had two weeks to prepare. We were watching all the VODs. Obviously, when you watch Fnatic right now, it can be fairly difficult to draft off a game plan because there's so many different things you're looking Fnatic at. Fnatic don't even know their game plan for Exactly, next they week, don't so really 100% know it themselves. They're just switching it up quite a lot. But at least you're looking at like, okay, Gamsu's gonna play a tank top lane. Duke can play Fiora or Quinn into it, and he will win that lane for sure. Suddenly you have a mismatch going on, and, and that's where Fnatic gotta find ways. They gotta surprise us, honestly, in the pick and ban phase. And I just wanna see more early game focus because I don't think playing full late game against QG and SKT is the right thing nope. to do, especially not against QG. They're being called the kings of teamfight when we talk to the LPL casters, and that's because they are legit so good in the late game. Yeah, disappointed Dad DeFisho is already on his way out if he doesn't see the picture. They haven't even started no, yet. I, I just want to see it. No, I'm saying, literally, I, I just don't want to see this three scaling champions oh. from like Febivan, Reckless, and Gamsu, and then surrender the early game completely. Because I, I don't think Fnatic is good enough for playing defensive to do that. Or so, I mean, scaling champions are okay if. Whatever you're up against, of them. yeah. For whatever, whatever you're up against, scales more than you. So at least you have a <laughs> winning matchup somewhere. Like Maokai isn't that much of a late game beast. Uh, just he's actually like a mid game power spike 
yeah. probably most he was just picked into a losing lane. So Fnatic, uh, in that game in particular that we have in mind, picked three losing lanes. Yeah, you gotta have no pressure. When you have Spirit as a jungler, you can't afford to pick three losing lanes because it's just not gonna work out. Yeah, it's really, really not. And that's something that CLG are particularly good at maybe not doing. They do play their laning phase relatively well. Um, the players are just in a test game to make sure that all of the settings are working and, and under uh, correct circumstances. So yeah. once that test has been approved, we I will saw get a blitz picking bands rebooted. It's a test. This is probably so the most really happy. Picks. I was like, being picked by AD <laughs> Carry as well. No, it's not no. the way it's gonna be. Uh, but let's bring it back to the match at hand because we have uh, talked a lot about Fnatic. I want to bring it back, the, the focus to SKT as well as CLG. Um, maybe a little bit more eyes on SKT. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned at the top of the show, they've won five of their best of threes in Korea. They've lost four. Most recently losing to the Afrika Freaks as well as uh, Longju Gaming, which are losses that really maybe were not expected. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not against the Afrika Freaks. I just should have won that one. I mean, they were pretty far ahead also in game two, and then Vega gets caught out. Randomly, for some reason, his team is running to try and help him, and they get caught out one by one by one, lose Baron, and lose game, basically. But it, again, it's been some of the problems we see. This team is no longer as smooth as we saw last year. Like, the shot calling is not the same, and obviously losing Marin was a hit to the team, even though he's now struggling in China, doing absolutely nothing for LGD, who's looking like one of the worst teams. That's actually impressive. Like that team. LG he was up here and he's just crashed. I know. Like I he's know. even under the table. He's just crashed down completely. He's in, the, he's in the cellar. That's how deep they are. And they have like the. the ra I know they're not in the tournament, but you just have to point that out. Like the, the ratio of talent to performance, I think historically has to be the biggest gap ever uh, on LGD. But they're not here. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's why they're not here. Please tell me how you really feel, Grandpa. Uh, Upset. I, I can tell. Uh, talking about some of the top laners, uh, Counter Logic Gaming's Darshan also had a few choice words about the IM finals. Um, I think we've spent a lot of time researching like our first opponents in our group, SKT, and we're really excited because they've always been known as one of the best teams in the world. And we're looking the strongest we've ever looked because we beat the other top three teams in North America, Immortals and Cloud9. So this is probably one of our best chances to do well at an international tournament so far. Uh, as soon as I was driving over on like the bus over here, I saw like a crowd of thousands of people just waiting outside at like 8 a.m. in jackets. And like that, like that dedication to come out that early just like made me even more excited for the event because I'm pretty sure there are gonna be some crazy fans here. I think we're gonna do really well. I wouldn't be surprised if we came out of the group first because we were doing a lot of heavy preparation. I would like to just take um, memories of like playing at one of the highest, like, most honorable stages in the world and proving that we're the best. So, great hearing from Darshan. Um, I Confidence. do have flashbacks, though. Uh, not going to be surprised to come out first. Not going to be surprised if we win Worlds. Um, it also, didn't work out that well for him last time. We have to tell Darshan, um, those 8,000 people outside were queuing up for CSGO. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our finals will be tomorrow in the Spotic, and I'm pretty sure we'll have a lot of fans as well. Uh, but, again, major props to everybody that has come out, because it is, it is insane. The queue is starting from 6 or 7 a.m. yesterday. But I have to echo that sentiment that feeling when you walk on stage and there's just a massive crowd uh, i've had the, honestly the the joy or the fortune to to have experienced that a couple of times and that is a memory you will never forget so that's getting a title at one of these tournaments especially once we move to the spodek for the finals venue looks absolutely insane by the way um if you can make it to the finals there can play get the, the crowd behind you that is one of the memories you will cherish forever and and we'll just make everything you've made decisions sacrifices whatever uh, in terms of esports we'll make it 100 percent worth it and you can love or hate this confidence from clg honestly because like if, to me it's a statement that doesn't really mean a whole lot other than it's quoted a lot. Uh, yeah, sure, people quote it all the time, but what else is he going to say? He's going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're just here to try. We're yeah, actually, try. yesterday, no, we, 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 could, we could have screamed a little more, but I was a little tired, you know, so I just take, took an early nap. I, I don't think you have to go out and say you're going to win the entire tournament. I think you can say we're going to go out and aim for top four, whatever, or we think maybe we can do it, but we need to overperform. St statements like that are fine, but CLG are doing this on purpose. Like, they want to show confidence. Clearly, something the team has, has agreed on, because who he said the same in his interview, uh, earlier today, that basically they could win. Like, they could beat SKT. So, clearly the team is saying, if we don't go out and say we're confident, well then, we might not even win the game. I'm not sure how much it matters, matters for them. I don't Man. mind it too much. I don't even really buy too much. Uh, I, I don't buy into it too much either. Fake it till you make it. Until Faker makes it. <laughs> and then ripping pepperonis. <laughs> 
That was, uh, I quite like that one. But yeah, I think it is fair. You don't enter a tournament and say, well, we expect to play second. So, yeah, I'm going in for bronze, boys. Aim aim high, and, and that's what you should be playing for. Um, the, the, the questions that are still on my mind is, is whether or not who his champion pool is going to be hit during picks and bans, and what sort of performance Six is going to put up, because he's playing a lot of Ezreal in NA, and it's leaving a lot to be desired. Um, he, you know, I, I just really feel like he's a bit out of position. He's maybe over eager with his arcane shifts at times. And I'm just not seeing a level of impact that I feel will shine against international competition, against Bang. Yeah, those like, are the it's tough. Two roughest matchup, Bang versus Stixay. Like, if, if he gets Lucian to Ezreal, he's going to get bullied. And more importantly, it doesn't matter how hard who he gets targeted, he's still playing as Faker in yeah. the mid lane. And that is just such a daunting task, because when Faker's on form, um, he, he's shown like incredible things like beyond reason so and who he has yet to show uh, things beyond reason Yeah, main thing though for, for Stixay is honestly just don't give up kills Like that's the main thing for him. He doesn't even have to be a big carry So I think if he just goes in and plays very safe, which he didn't do against Immortals He's gonna be okay, but he's obviously not gonna have the same impact a guy like Bang will have well gentlemen we can believe the hype. Uh, we are into picks and bans for game one here on day two. It is Group B's SK Telecom pre-tournament. Favorites for the whole thing taking on CLG. Darshan's favorite to win the whole thing. Bard, Fiora, Callista taken away by SK Telecom. A lot of respect to Aframu's Bard who has been really playing that a lot. And then Cogmore Nautilus, the reply targeting both Duke as well as Bang. Kind of interesting they're banning Callista. Um, I think you could actually value that as a first pick, but clearly they have something else in mind. Otherwise, you would never ban it on the blue side. In this case, against a, also an AD carry like Stixay, who's not the big carry on this team. Do they just go Lucian here, or they actually value the Nidalee? So Different jungler, based on different style. Based on a tournament, I would expect a Lucian here, because Nidalee wasn't really highly valued, but if this was like purely an AU, uh, I would have screened for Nidalee pick. So I'm really happy I mean, that SKT picked this up. Had this been Bengi, they wouldn't have first picked Nidalee. Yeah. This is again Blank coming in, more mechanically gifted jungler, for this lineup, so they value Nidalee clearly very highly. One bad thing for SKT by being bullside is the fact that counter picking top lane is gonna be almost impossible because CLG will most likely save that pick. Uh -huh. I, I, I mean, this, this Poppy almost has to go top at this point, so. Suddenly they show it though, yeah, that's actually very early. And so they don't. That kind of goes against CLG's normal stuff. Yeah, they, maybe they just wanna predict uh, SKT is gonna react to the split push style and play something else. That would be weird. Other than that, so they have an early poppy locked in. They could have just locked in their jungler. So they know very likely that the Smith is just gonna be playing Gragas. That's like, I feel that's 90% sure. Or the Udyr. Or the Udyr, perhaps. So they could have locked that in an early rotation. So they decided to hide that a little bit to get a little bit of a feel what SKT is going for. And they seem to be going for protect the AD carry comp. We have seen this a lot before. Uh, the, last, the, jungle. the last six games, SKT played, they had Lulu in four of the games. Faker played Lulu in every single one of them. Yep. And it, it's a pick that does extremely well with Bang, because Bang is super good at getting to his power spikes on AD carries. He's most likely gonna pick Ezreal in this case. And then you farm up to two items fully complete, stack that tier, and then you can start team fighting so, so effectively. And it's super difficult to deal with. When they have run this before, we've seen like a Tom Kench top lane come in. Not necessarily, this, Guaranteed we're gonna get that pick here, but it is if the one is like a pure protect Go all in bang yeah. Full on we have seen that before well, we'll see what they can do I know Monte Cristo was talking a lot about fakers Lulu in terms of preparation coming in and spoke very highly of his damage per minute With a large number of Lulu games under his belt obviously being helped out by that lane bully status But for CLG they seem to be going quite all in on this team fighting with the yeah. Pumpy, the Gragas the Thresh Leaving a counter pick for Huey in the mid lane um, and we need to see which way he's going to go. Will it be the Lux? Will it be the LeBlanc? There's is a little surprising though, given that you know that you're going to be playing into an Ezreal, uh, Lu and Braum. I feel like it's very hard to make a Thresh work, because whatever you hook will get wild growth, you will never burn it. You're kind of playing at the front parts of the team fight, where all this poke will just incidentally hit you or splash on top of you, and you're just not tanky enough. Um, Alistar was available on the table, but Aphromu likely didn't feel comfortable playing like three of these champions that go into the, mm. the deep pits of the team fight. you know, next to Poppy, next to Gragas. Do we really want an, an Alistar in there? I feel it's also just for the laning phase itself. Yeah. Having a double range laning phase now, make up for the, for the fact that your AD carry might not be the strongest nope. laner by picking a strong 2v2 and then you can, you can opt what's into the, it. What's the odds that SKT were anticipating an Ezreal lock-in? Because that Ezreal... I mean, SKT were 100% going to pick it as soon as they, they had the Lulu lock and they yeah. saw Lucian being picked. Yeah. Trundle as well, I've become a big Trundle top fan. Especially into the likes of Poppy because she gets even extra MR and armor with a W. So there's a lot of stats to steal away and 
once you get literally just one item under your belt, you can actually 1v1 almost any top lane except for a Fjord, which you can struggle against. But we even saw that go very, very even yesterday. So you basically put Duke in a situation where he can either be a split pusher or he can even join a fight and actually have an impact because he can steal the stats of the Poppy, be very, very tanky. And the pillar for disengage together with Lulu Braum, super, super strong team fight come from SKT and just all around. I, I like it. Yeah, safe lane here in the mid from Hui. He's going to yield the pressure though because Lulu level 1 to 6 has an incredibly strong laning phase. Actually, many mid laners in Europe regard her as the strongest uh, early laning, laning phase overall. So that's the wind push in the mid. That means that Nidalee will be able to invade. But you do have that really, really nasty, gnarly. Um, Top lane 2v2 yeah. combo with the Poppy and the Gragas. So if CLG finds standard lanes, technically um, SKT should struggle a little bit to stay alive because at least one of those lanes should be under pressure uh, from the Gragas early until the Nidalee can get the CS advantage. Gentlemen, I need a prediction and a one-liner as to why you feel a team will win this opening game. SKT or CLG Deficio? Uh, SKT, I don't trust 100% in CLG's team fighting comp because we just haven't seen that style really be impactful before. Good, two lines, I like it. Um, <laughs> it's a long line. SKT because Faker to make up for Deficio's long line. There you have it, adding Hello. a second line on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the watch. LCK takeover as we head over to Doha and Monty. Hey guys, welcome to game number one here on day two of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championships. I'm Doa, that's Monte Cristo, and we're about to go into SK Telecom versus CLG, the matchup that Monty was born to cast. That's right, I'm here, my former team versus the two-time world champion team that I cast <laughs> in Korea, so it should be a good time. Uh, a bit interesting in this one, actually. Faker has actually played Lulu more times than any other champion this season, and it will be who he's first game on Lux yeah, this year. Blank on Nidalee, too, which is going to be interesting to see. A lot of questions about that guy as we move on to Summoner's Rift. Yeah, and that's very curious because SK Telecom almost always bans out the Nidalee. Yeah. Uh, and they have never played a game with it this year. So it's a bit of a mix-up here for sure. They're trying something new, and we'll have to see if SKT can make it work or not. Man, I mean, in my mind, it's all about Blank right now. I mean, they left Bengi back in Korea. They sort of put him in the hyperbolic time chamber to get a little bit of practice by himself, get Blank a little bit of international experience. But this guy is untested. This is a jungler for SK Telecom that they put a lot of faith in, but has had a lot of trouble in Korea already on the, inter on the international stage. You got to think those nerves are going to be even bigger, so we'll see how he can handle it. Yeah, Blank has you know, a small sample size, but he's still sitting at about 52% kill contribution, which is extremely low for a jungler. Ideally, yeah. you'd like to see about 70 plus for any jungler, and uh, he just hasn't been clicking with the rest of the team. We'll be playing that counter jungling style into a winning matchup versus Gragas, so that's a big plus. Oh wow! For him. Faker, cute Getting little move by the there. Thunderlord. Uh, that's what can happen. And of course, the Lux passive with an auto attack and one of her spells will proc that. So getting a nice little early advantage there. But for SKT in this game, as we see an invade coming in on the bottom side, and Wolf going to be finding Xpithy and Darshan there. But this is uh, this is about keeping those lanes pressured so that Nidalee can do the work and the lane swap should account for that, at least for the time being, and give um, Bang some breathing room here on the Ezreal, which is a champion we've seen Stixay playing a lot recently, this time prioritizing the stronger laner, let's yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, uh, and Bang would have been fine on that Lucian or that uh, Ezreal as well, who he in a little bit of trouble gets exhausted already. Aphromo flashes over the wall for the double play. Faker on the run now. Ignite ticking down. Faker has to burn that flash. Looks like he'll just barely get out. But already, some pressure turned right around onto SK Telecom by CLG. Yeah, who he handling himself quite well, and both huh. supports actually doing that roam play right there. That's not something that we've seen. We did see TSM try and do that in a lane swap yesterday. Unusual to see both players actually going in for that. And yeah. two summoners burned, but by the time Aphromu actually gets in a lane again, those should be back up. So well won there by CLG. Yep, getting that uh, flash away from Faker early on is going to make uh, things a little bit more dangerous. And it, it honestly puts more pressure on Blank, right? I mean, one of the things that Bengi does so well is kind of enable Faker to be really aggressive in lane, and Faker's going to have an even harder time doing that without flash. Yep, certainly a, a big advantage, too. It will affect the jungle matchup also if Faker's not able to extend very deep. Um, but yeah, this is great. Last time we saw the failed gank in mid from TSM sort of slow down the tempo on that tower push, but with both supports, going for the mid lane play this time, and it doesn't really matter, so towers will be falling, and definitely an advantage there for, for uh, CLG. Yep. The good old lane swap that we've seen so much of, pretty much worldwide right now. 
but how much milling around in mid lane will we get after these other outer turrets fall? Before the action finally begins, Monty, that's what I want to know. We had such an action-packed day yesterday, especially game number one. I feel like this one's not going to be quite as action-packed. Yeah, it may not be. Interestingly, Bang is going for an early cull here instead of a tier, so that's, uh, that's quite curious, just looking to scale up as fast as he can. A few more combat stats, of course, on that item as a, as a first buy, but he will not be stacking up that tier or getting that Muramana quite as quickly. Darshan now having to fall back as Bang and Wolf come down a lane. Same thing in the top side with Duke, so besides that sort of double support gank in the mid lane, everything going fairly standard. I mean, you wonder with that call for Bang, if maybe getting that stacked up a little bit quicker helps you get a slightly faster Iceborne Gauntlet while it doesn't really slow down your tier as much. I'm trying to like figure out why you would do this. Uh, he may not have had enough money for the tier two as a could be. fast swap back, so I didn't check on that at the time. But in any case, uh, we'll be charging that up. We have seen some players like Doublelift yesterday getting the tier cull and really just trying to scale up very quickly in these lane swap scenarios. And yeah. I like the fact that cull is a very situational item right now and that you can buy it in these lane swaps and it is useful, but probably not in standard lanes unless you're in certain matchups like versus an Ezreal where he's going to buy that early tier. It's been interesting. You know, one thing I feel like we should talk about with SKT is that uh, yeah, they're sixth place in Korea right now, and they aren't doing quite as great, but one of the maybe more surprising things about them statistically is that uh, they tend to be pretty far behind gold-wise at 15 minutes compared to a lot of the other, you know, top teams in Korea and other regions and things, but they seem to always come alive around, like, what, 12 to 15 minutes, something like that, slightly after 15 minutes in the mid-game. So even if you get SK Telecom behind early, sometimes you can really struggle when they decide to flip the switch. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, they certainly have a stronger mid and late game, but there have been a lot of mistakes. I mean, we have to remember SKT is coming off uh, two consecutive losses versus Longju and the Afrika Freaks. So it hasn't been easy for them. We are going to see the Dragon get taken down now by Blank. Wolf will just go ahead and uh, switch off on the aggro for that. Will be a bit of a slow take here, but good timing. Yeah. Overall, this won't be interrupted. So Blank starting that while the turret was still going down, and they're going to get a head start on the Dragon stacks. Yeah, an early dragon for SKT. I feel like that's something we don't generally see a lot. Be careful, Blank. Okay, it's all right. SKT gets dragon number one. And so far, so far so good for Blank. But can he gank? Can Blank gank? And Blank has not been a very good ganker, it has to be said, in his career so far. But it, these lane swaps, you're rarely going to see these ganks in the first place. Uh, looks like Aphromu and uh, Stixay will be... Heading down, back down to that bottom lane, so everybody's swapping back up again. Bang and Darshan going head to head. Yeah, Darshan actually taking quite a bit of damage here. Teleport coming in on the Bang to try and take some pressure off. Darshan low, playing a uh, Pang rather, takes first blood. That TP canceled, didn't want to follow through with it. And so just the 1v1, Bang uh, getting a kill already. Huh. You know, I, I hate to say it, Doa, but Darshan is strong in NA, but when we've seen him play against players uh, from other regions, he hasn't really been able to hold up. At the World Championship, he didn't hold up to Smeb. Uh, I think Duke is going to be a big problem for him, but even in that scenario, being very aggressive, not communicating well with Xsmithy, and they uh, burned a TP from Huhi on that too, just a little bit greedy and not yeah. having the, the stats to actually deal with this Ezreal. Yeah, TP coming in for CLG. They want to try to secure this tier two, I suppose. Who he in trouble in the mid lane, though? Q misses. Wolf gets caught by the light binding. Going to take a little bit of damage on the way out. Maybe if that Q had hit from Wolf, they could have followed up on a little bit. But uh, pressure on the mid lane either way. CLG takes that tier two in bottom, though. And this is CLG's strong macro play here. When we talk about CLG these days, it's not that they have such strong individual performers. It's that their ability to shot call is actually quite good. And so they take that first blood and they actually turn it into a gold lead via just a teleport. They don't get phased. They head right back down to the bottom side of the map and there's no pressure there yeah. up in top. And crucially right now, Wolf is only level three while Aphromoo, he was two on that gank in the mid lane. Aphromoo level four. So he spent a lot of time roaming, but falling behind when it comes to experience and missing that crucial uh, skill shot there in the mid lane. Yep, CLG's gonna grab that red buff. Looks like SK Telecom is gonna go for the Rift Herald. Duke gets grabbed, and he's actually gonna bring in Aphromoo as well with him. Duke trying to back away, but Stixay helps X Smith a pick up the kill. Wow, Duke just getting completely caught there. Great play by Aphromoo too. Yeah, absolutely. Duke way too far forward there, gets caught out, gets a little bit greedy, and that's a big punish there because they're gonna deny 
Duke a lot of CS. He could have frozen that way very deep and started to pile on an advantage on Darshan, but that's just not going to be the case right now. Blank on the other side of the map taking the Rift Herald. Now, can they actually turn this into something? They've gone down when it comes to turrets. They've gone down when it comes to gold, and CLG just beating him on the map right now. Yeah, Faker could be in trouble here too. Xmithy coming in. Looks like Faker's kind of juking around the side of the lane, but he'll be okay. Has the ward there, so he should be safe. Wow. So, CLG, they've got this little early lead. So what do you do with it? You know, how do you, how do you make this bigger? Well, they have it. Uh, we, we're hearing the expert desk talk about it. They do have a, a pretty good team composition to create picks with the Lux and the Gragas. They've got some pretty decent team fighting. But they may want to try and start stepping up this siege while this Ezreal is still weak because in the late game, SK Telecom is going to be extraordinarily difficult to deal with. They just have too much poke in that blue build Ezreal once he gets rolling. We've seen exactly what that champion can do, but CLG, they're not relenting. They're playing around the waves very well. Bang here, just trying to clear out on the other side of the map, but he's just going to be slower, and they have to get some wave clear over there, but they just don't have it. Of course, in this side lane, Duke here sitting on just a pickaxe right now, trying to build up to that Tiamat, but it's, it's going to be hard for them to defend some of these objectives without <laughs> Faker being there. That Gromp belongs to Xmithy. But yeah, it's interesting. I mean, SK Telecom is saying, hey, we just want to kind of sit back and farm up and CLG just putting on so much map pressure right now that it's kind of derailing SK Telecom for the moment anyway. Yeah, but Aphromoo again, doing what he does best. I mean, yeah. Aphromoo has really been shining this season, I feel, when it comes to putting out down pressure. And he's the leader of this team. He can just challenge you for all of these jungle camps as we see right away. He's just not relenting, knows that Stixay is holding the pressure edge in that lane and just making it very difficult for Wolf to walk out and even get wards in the river. So I really like the way Aphromoo has been playing so far. Yeah, he's been playing really well. Great gank on the Duke in the bot lane as well, or a little bit earlier. It's fun to see. It's always dangerous when you let Aphromoo have Thresh. That's something a lot of teams have ended up regretting. Well, I mean, they banned out his Bard. That's a huge respect ban to him based yeah. on their last week of competition where he uh, he did a lot in some of those team fights. Yeah, that's right. Big week for CLG last week. The only team so far to take out Immortals. Uh, interesting, too. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of Frost Queen's claim, but it will be built here first, of course, on the Lulu. So they will have some extra... I guess vision here and uh, some ability to play around the engage of CLG. But this, you know, this, uh, this team composition is still going to take a while to get online. And CLG, they want this outer tier one. Blank and Bang, the only ones there right now. They have Faker split pushing on this Lulu. He does have TP for a possible collapse. Yep, and he's got, again, you know, that Frost Queen's claim too. So he's a little bit safer on the split push. Yeah, they're just going to recall right now. I don't think CLG is going to be going anywhere with the wave so deep. And hmm. Still going to have that Lux there. Looks like they will split off to try and deal with this wave. Lucian heading down to the bottom side. And Bang not ending up falling through with that recall. And they're going to swap Faker right back into that mid lane. They had hoped they would be able to get some at least split push pressure in the side lanes with two teleports. But it's not going to, to be able to happen here because the True Shot Barrage already used means that it was getting a bit dangerous there if they want to defend their mid tier one. Yeah, a Dragon's coming up in 10 seconds, too. And right now, CLG has a you know, good amount of control over that side of the map. Somehow, SK Telecom did get some wards into their jungle, though. So we'll see how much attention yeah. SKT wants to actually pay to that. I mean, the vision game, 100% in SK Telecom's favor yeah. right now. They've got deep wards in both sides of the jungle. They are starting to be cleared out. But they're trying to play and push up these lanes, get as much farm as they can, and just scale smoothly into that late game. They've retaken the gold lead in spite of the fact that they're a tower down. I mean, this is this is the moment, right? This is when, if SK Telecom's going to win between 12 and 15 minutes, is really kind of when they start to take that lead. Darshan going in onto Duke, though, going to go for the 1v1. Nobody else really around. Teleport's available for the mid laners if they want to join. But Duke's just going to back away. I got way too excited about that 1v1 <laughs> duel, didn't I? It was well, a top laner duel. I should have known better, Monty. Duke can't really do anything right now. He has boots of swiftness and a pickaxe, and he's just playing to farm. He's trying yeah. to he's trying to just get as much farm as he can. That's his goal at the present time, and be there, be present on the map for that farm to get there as quickly as possible. But you're not going to be winning against a poppy who already has a completed Sunfire cape. Oh, wow. Wolf tried to uh, block some of that damage, but Faker still took a big chunk. And uh, SKT getting chunked out as Baron is alive is probably not exactly what they were looking for. 
so second dragon of the game looks like it will be going over to CLG. Yeah. Barring some sort of desperation. Nice poke there to set up this objective. All right, this is Blank's moment, man. This is where he comes in and steals it with Nidalee. And everyone's like, Blank, you're pretty good after all. But he's walking around the side. Looks like they may want to fight this anyway. They're trying to push CLG back for the moment, taking out a couple wards. It's risky for SKT. Yeah, very risky right now. They just don't have a ton of power at the moment. Dragon getting lower. Blank, Faker's there. Faker only has half his life right now. Dragon does not get stolen. X Smithy secures it for CLG. And SK Telecom just has to back off. Yeah, talk about fighting in a power drop right there. That yeah. is exactly the wrong time to be trying that engagement. They were poked out. They're still working to build up this Ezreal. Uh, it looks like they will be going for Rod of Ages, and Faker oh. not going to get hit by that one. Yeah, barely gets out of there with the uh, recall just in time. I mean, I guess... SK Telecom at least didn't try to overdo it, you know? They, they knew that they didn't need to fight over that dragon. Just kind of letting it go in the end. Blank, fading into CLG's jungle. Uh -oh. oh, X Smithy might get caught right here. Oh, but Wolf misses his Q. Oh, Wolf, wow, Blank going for it anyway. X Smithy low, there's a true shot barrage. Doesn't connect though, and it looks like X Smithy will live. Won't get his red buff, but... He'll stay alive at least. Man, Wolf has not been good on this Braum so far. Yeah. He, that's, he's missed two Qs on these ganks and uh, attempts that really should have resulted in kills. And now, uh oh, we're going to find a pause. Time for Wolf to reevaluate his life. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, this is feeling a lot like the last international event before Worlds I was at. <laughs> Well, so hopefully he has a better tournament than that, though. I mean, Wolves has only played Braum in one game this season, so it hasn't really been up there in terms of priority. He's been playing mostly Trundle and Alistair, and overall in his career, just taking a look, he's actually two and four all-time on Braum, so only it's, six games and a pretty poor win, win rate. Yeah, it's, it's not really a champion you associate with uh, Wolf at all. We'll see if he can uh, produce a little bit better results today. Looks like the issue is with Bang's computer, just yeah, uh, judging with what's going on there. Uh, no. Or oh, Blank. Hey. They're talking to Blank right oh. now. Well, he, Blank's like, well, yeah, I mean, Wolf misses Q, but I hit my spear. So, uh, <laughs> so go talk to him, all right? <laughs> Everything's fine. Darshan, a uh, lost duel in the early game, but certainly picking up on that poppy since then. Looking okay. But yeah, you got to wonder what would happen if Darshan ended up in that 1v1 versus Duke, right? Well, I mean, he's It'd doing rough he, he is he's doing a good job so far. I think that first blood was rather unfortunate and he just misjudged Bang's strength at that point in time. I mean, uh Duke as well, a returning IEM champion, one with uh, the KT Bullets way back when when he was known as Leopard. That's right. Yeah, 2 years ago, he stood on the stage here in Katowice and did Lift the trophy, but even Duke, I mean, he had he had that uh, problem too in the laning phase where he misjudged the fact that CLG had stuck around close to their inhibitor turret and ended up getting hooked and dying. So a little bit cocky play from both of our top laners in this match. Yep. Yeah, maybe it's just confusion with the staff. They're like, wait, wait, this isn't Bengi. Who's this guy? There's an imposter in SK Telecom. No, it's blank. There we go. Microphone's just fine, says blank. Leave it alone. <laughs> And so we'll see what the problem is. Get that fixed. Let's take a look at a replay right here. A little bit of uh, Bang versus Darshan action from earlier. I mean, he just misjudged where X Smithy was. X Smithy also pops. It, it looks like that was just a huge miscommunication because he pops actually his Raptor buff and starts attacking a ward in Tribrush while uh, Darshan is dying. Huh. So that was that was just a little bit of a misplay there between the two teammates coming in, and Bang just takes that all in immediately. Calls for the TP to back him up as soon as he sees the TP coming in from who he unlocks. And so they're telling Blank now, it's like, all right, I know you're kind of nervous, but you got to gank a little bit more on this Nidalee. You'll, you'll do fine. Okay. Well, everybody's ready. We are going to be resuming this game right now. Looks like Blank is back in the game, and he will be going ahead and doing this Rift Herald with the rest of his teammates. They take the red buff, and, you know, SKT, they've had that vision advantage. And if I feel that if CLG doesn't do anything soon, SK Telecom's ability to outscale them is just going to take over this game. Well, that's the danger, right? I mean, and that's kind of been the danger when SKT wins a lot of their games right now is that they'll just simply outscale you. They'll just simply get to a point where they're crazy good team fighting. Their champions have gotten to the point where they've got a lot of strength. And CLG put a lot of good pressure on early, but they need to keep it going. A push in the mid lane certainly would do a lot to help that. 
Uh-oh, bang. Gonna take a lot of damage here. Actually gets pulled into the culling. Nice hook from Aphromoo to secure that kill for CLG. Bang just uh, overstaying his welcome there by the turret. Well, he walked up because he actually didn't have his uh, his uh, true shot barrage to clear that wave, but instead Aphromoo just lands another green yeah. hook and takes the kill. I gotta say, man, Aphromoo's had a, a pretty awesome game so far on that thresh. He's been having a pretty awesome year. I have yeah. to say, he's been fantastic. And that'll be another kill coming in from CLG. They still are lagging behind when it actually comes to that gold total, though. A little bit. I mean, this is actually a, a rare occasion where we see SK Telecom ahead in gold at 15 minutes. Yeah, they're, typically they're down by about 300 gold by yep. this point in the game. But yes, it's very true what you say. So much of this season has been spent playing tanks with Bang scaling to carry in the late game. It's yep. been all about Bang this season. Fakers uh, played six games of, Lu of Lulu. It's his most played champion. This is the style that they like to go with. They're not showing their hand by any means coming into this event. And uh, they're just going for the comfort picks, really. I mean, the thing is, is we've seen traditionally, too, when SK Telecom has issues in the jungle, Faker is forced to kind of pull back a little bit, play more utility-style champions, not be quite the crazy aggressive Faker that we all know and love. More that this season, too. Darshan versus Duke up in the top lane, but Darshan's just going to back up under turret. Blank is coming up, though. Darshan flashes the spear, pops that ultimate just in case. Wolf there to try to get that gank. Wolf gets uh, knocked back to the Baron pit, and so that's going to be the end of that one, I guess. Yeah, could have just uh, not been knocked around right there, <laughs> yeah. but instead does get hit by the Poppy ultimate. But this is the point in the game where the, the Trundle's going to start to take over, building into the TMI being able to clear the waves faster. And now he's actually got some decent items completed and those trades going to force out a flash. CLG still pushing in this mid lane and they're gonna have to lantern Stix A out. Yep, trying to put a little bit more pressure on that turret, but SK Telecom uh, much more ready this time than when they lost Bang a little bit earlier. So we'll see, I mean, because this is it, right? CLG has kind of started to stagnate a little bit in terms of pressure, in terms of what they've been able to accomplish on the map. So they got to make a move soon. Yeah, but they keep grouping up. They keep trying to play this way. And Faker is kind of frozen deep in his own lane. And the advantage here for CLG is that bottom lane is just constantly pre pressuring, True. pushing with the minion wave now that two are down. They're going to start TP. to TP in. That's right. They're going to bring in Faker and Duke on that ward. Going to go in down to Huhi. He gets knocked up by that Braum ultimate. Culling comes in. SKT Blank gets the kill anyway. Faker will ult himself to knock up Aphromoo. Slow him down. They've got to get through the box. Duke's going to tank that one wall. Try to get Faker a little bit closer. There's the Whimsy. And there's a kill for Faker on SK Telecom getting two for the blue side off of that engagement. I mean, at a certain point, CLG became very predictable. They had tried that mid lane yeah. pressure like four or five times in a row at that stage, and they had SKT preempted it. They had already sent their TPs into the side lane so they could go ahead and make that play. They had the ward set up in mid, and they used the TPs at precisely the same time on the same ward, which makes it very difficult to tell how many people are actually going to be arriving. It was all five. They catch out CLG and pick up a couple of kills. Who he trying to make a play? Yeah, trying to get down there on the Faker. Light binding doesn't connect, though. Faker dodging around, uses the uh, Frost Queen's claim just to slow Darshan. And so the reverse pressure, the reverse gank attempt coming in from CLG doesn't quite do the trick. They might still be able to get that mid lane. Oh! oh! Snipe Stixay from across the map. True shot barrage does work. Yeah, that's, I mean, there was, they saw him go into that brush, actually. Uh, they didn't Did know if he had gone out the uh, other side or not, but yeah. he just guessed. And so he was actually snipe blind right there. So Bang uh, just making it up. And now he's 2-1-2, one, 100% two, kill contribution for this Ezreal. And he is starting to get scary. Yeah, he is. Has that Iceborne gauntlet. He's still stacking up that Mana Muna. Still stacking the cull, but he's uh, culling some champions of his own from across the map. Let's check that one out again. Oh, they did have a, they did, oh, I'm gonna watch this replay first. Yeah. yeah. So we see the double teleports coming in and just great timing. SK Telecom nails the timing on those teleports. So both Faker and Duke show up at the same time. Very late TP here from Poppy. Poppy below the river, not really able to do this as all of SKT tracks into the top side jungle as a five man unit. So Darshan just has to run back under the turret, really has no opportunity to make a play there. Yeah, SKT is gonna turn it into another dragon too. That's going to be Dragon number two for SK Telecom. Well, it's actually Dragon two, not another Dragon two. Right, it's two. another two, two Dragon. <laughs>
Dragon 2-2 two, two goes to SKT for number 2. And nobody here to defend Faker on the split push. He has a Lich Bane, so itemizing Frost Queen's claim into Lich Bane. Very, very easy to start split pushing on this Lulu and just zoom out, of course. And they're starting to just come back in this game, and they've kind of torn it wide open now. 4K yeah. gold lead for SK Telecom here at 20 minutes. I mean, when SKT wins, this is usually what we see. And when Blank gets caught in the jungle, this is usually what we see, too. Actually, usually we see him die. He got away, though. Managed to make it out. Got that flash. Dodged the ult from X Smithy. And he's been... It's been, a, it's been a pressure game for him. He actually has been stealing away some of these buffs, but... Yeah. Honestly, when you see a Nidalee, you would expect him to be, I don't know, 10, 20 CS ahead of the Gragas, but x just been going camp for camp with him for the most part. Yeah, there hasn't really been a lot of gank pressure coming in from Blank either. I mean, he's been doing okay, but as far as, you know, if I had to make a list of reasons SKT are winning this game, I don't think Blank would be too high up on that list. Yeah, he's been okay, but certainly nothing outstanding, nothing on the order of what we've, you know, what we're going to see probably later today from Swift or from MLXG yesterday. Yeah, very true. Mid turret goes down, SK Telecom taking the lead in the turrets as well at this point. Blue buff, yet again, going over to SKT, and, you know, if you're CLG at this point, you know, your opponents are outscaling you, you're 5k, no, make that 6k down, starting to lose all the pressure on the map, you know, what do you do? You have to make some picks, right? You have to team fight uh, because... Uh -huh. They, oh. They're in a position right now where they actually can't stop the Lulu and the Trundle split push, but they've not, they're not going to hit their timing. I mean, look at these teleports. They're coming right back up for SK Telecom. They use their TP inefficiently with Huhi, but Bang getting oh. caught out. Nearly gets killed off by the Culling plus the Lux ultimate. Faker's back for Vengeance, but not 1v3 Vengeance. No, that's, they're going to lose that turret. Style. True Shot Barrage, yeah. not going to buy them anywhere near enough time for this one. CLG fight back, nearly get that pick. Very good synergy between Huhi and Stixay to set up that near kill with the culling and the light binding, but not able to actually confirm it. And now Stixay on the run here. Glitterland's actually going to miss, so... Yeah, Faker no getting there. aggressive there. They got the uh, flash out of him. Well, Faker flash for that too, so... Yeah, summoner yeah. for Summoner. But Summoner definitely more valuable on that. Oh, actually didn't get flashed out of 6A, never mind. So yeah. Faker. Oh no, he just uses heal. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Faker definitely getting the worst end of that deal. Had he trade flash for flash, of course, since Faker does have whimsy and he has an ability to keep himself alive in that wild growth and of course the shield, that would have been probably okay. But trading flash for heal, definitely not a good choice here for SKT. Yeah. All right, so SK Telecom. Trying to find a way to close this one out. Well, and we look at, we, I, the expert desk was talking about this, but if we look at CLG just came coming off this 2-0 week. How did they beat Cloud9? How did they beat Immortals? And it was through the split push, and that has been their dominant and I would say only strategy, really. And as soon as we get into a situation where they can no longer control the map, they're not being decisive at all when it comes to actually attempting to force fights, using teleports as well as SK Telecom. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a kind of under... It was a strong early game, surprisingly strong. I, I really like what CLG was doing, but they have just kind of tapped out at this point, it looks like. Yep. The battle of the top lane tanks. Duke scaring Darshan away just a little bit. But that'll continue for pretty much the next few years. <laughs> That's about right. Oh, Blank gets caught with a light binding. Yeah. That's out, though. QSS now picked up by by Bang. I think he's yep. tired of getting caught out by these light bindings. He died once, nearly died a second time. I'm picking up an item just to solve his issues in that regard. And Yeah, he's got two big items finished already, so about time to pick up that QSS. So x really doing a good job of just being annoying here at the Baron, popping a ward in, and then continuously triggering the Baron, causing some damage to the members of SKT. But Bang still has that cull, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Yeah, he's probably, uh, you know, sell that or the Dorans for some nice wards at this point in time. That would be my preference, Doa. Yeah. But it has slowed him down in terms of his damage. He does have the Muramana complete now. This is professional League of Legends, man. This is where AD carries never sell <laughs> Dorans blades. <laughs> I thought that was just solo queue. He really <laughs> should just sell it. You saw the games yesterday, right? I mean, there was not a lot of Doran's Blade sales going on. Well, I, honestly, at this point in the game, it's probably better... Well, he's going to sell the Cull, pick up the Bilgewater Cutlass. Uh, the Doran's Blade, it's better to have that because you actually get a percent 
life steal, and the later the game the goes, the, the more that matters, as opposed to a flat three HP per hit. So yeah, I definitely want to sell the call right now. Uh, Wolf getting grabbed there, getting locked up, has to burn his ult, flashes away, X Smithy coming in, Blank trying to support his support, and here comes Duke from the side for the flank, drops that pillar, tries to slow up CLG to give SK Telecom the chance to catch up. Bang there with the damage, Duke takes a bit, but not much. Nice wild growth, three-man knockup for SK Telecom. CLG still on the run, but Darshan with a good ultimate to help CLG disengage. Didn't go well, but it could have gone a lot worse for CLG. Yeah, CLG had some nice kiting there. They thought they had, they thought they had caught out Wolf, and they were able to get some damage without losing anybody, surprisingly, in spite of that very good wild growth onto Duke that knocked up four or five members of their team. Yeah, that was a great ult from Faker, but just uh, not really an opportunity to follow up. All right, so Xmithy, he's not playing Udyr this time, but he is still going Zerat jungler. This has been the special here, but that said, it's it's just without another strong split pusher, it's just not going to be as effective this game. It might be able to buy them some time, but buy them some time for what, really, would be my question. And we'll see. Duke making his exit from the top lane, didn't want to fight Xmithy in 6A. Ooh. Uh oh, Darshan. The hidden Darshan is the deadliest. Well, wow. very well might be, especially Aframu starting to come over right now. They're pushing forward while taking a dragon. Uh, this is not a smart call from SKT. Yeah, they're going to get the dragon, but they might lose Faker. Faker trying to whimsy away. Wild Gross himself. There's the uh, Q, and it looks like he'll be just fine. CLG couldn't collapse on him quite fast enough, I guess. Wow, that's a lot of damage coming out of that Lulu as well. Yeah, well, Death Cap and the Lich Bane, so his autos are really starting to hurt now. Yeah, and uh, you look at Darshan, not a ton of MR on that Poppy right now either. Yeah, just a Cowl still trying to build into that. Of course, there are a couple of AP threats, though, from SKT, especially now that the Nidalee Rod of Age is going to be stacking up nicely. Abyssal Scepter already completed. Yep. And it's been mostly a farm game, but this is how SK Telecom is like to play. If you can't, if you can't really pressure them early, uh, they have been they have been pretty good in the late game. Very true. Bang over the wall. Oh, finds Aframu. Easy kill for SKT Bang. Had the ward. Knew exactly where to go. Forces and a flash too. Just Bang yeah. coming in. Doesn't have to use a summoner. Kills the support. Then takes out who he's flash. This is what Bang does, man. I mean, they've been relying on him to carry all season long, and he is he has no problem doing that, especially on Ezreal. Definitely one of his best champions. Yeah, even though the minion wave and they've got the Zerat portal pushing down to that tier two turret, look how aggressive Bang and Blank are playing right here. Yeah, they're. Uh... They've, they've actually kept Stixay and except the, at their tier two turret, even though they have nothing, no minion wave except at their own tier two. Huh. Uh, Duke pushing up bottom as well. You have a Titanic Hydra and Iceborne Gauntlet now. So wow. usually we only see a Trundle go for one offensive item. Uh, and then build just straight tank stats after that, but not going to be true this time around. Oh, Tushat Barrage gets dodged by Stixay, of course, but Faker, or Bang rather, already doing a ton of damage. I'm used to saying Faker, but it's really been Bang this season, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has been, but that's they've been playing around that strength, and it's been working very, very well Yeah. Uh, in, in a lot of the games. In fact, I would say it's actually SKT's best strategy that they've used. I think when they shy away from having Bang be that big carry, that's where things start to go wrong for them. Well, we saw Bang uh, carry pretty hard in Season 5 a, a number of times in SK Telecom. You know, maybe would have lost the game otherwise. So he's really kind of coming to his own, you know, as SK Telecom combined, you know, when SNK went away when we got this new SK Telecom T1 team post Piglet, post Mondu. Bang has really stepped up to be that great AD carry. Yeah, he has. And we've seen this just very large gold lead develop now, 7K, but there's only a three, there's only a three kill differential and we are actually even here on turrets. So it's, you know, SK Telecom just making making the most out of their pressure on the map right now, and Blank is really starting to pull ahead from X Smithy. Yeah. Whoa, who he? Man, Faker just, he's one of those players where you're like, I didn't know Lulu could do that much da much damage. That's how I, and he's just going to sit here and tank it with his shield, take a few Lich Bane shots, try yeah. and power down and increase their lead. But the three dragons are, are going to be worrisome for CLG. I mean... I knew support Lulu could do that much damage because that's just how I play support Lulu. But mid, you know, you don't see this often. Two shot barrage doesn't hit Huhi. It was a nice try. Oh, Baker going a little bit too early and nice gets hook. grabbed after the wild growth. He's going to go down. <laughs> Stuck around a little bit too long. That's Baker. Blank trying to get out of there. Gets protected by his support a little bit. 
Well, this okay. is how they in return. This is how they lost the Africa Freaks. Remember, they were 5k yeah, ahead, and they started playing overly aggressive, getting caught out, and that allowed the Freaks to come back into this game. Stixay in trouble. All right, they're going for it. Stixay over the wall. They're out for move with another grab. He gets taken down. Blank jumping onto it. Smith, he can't follow him over the wall, though. So they do lose someone. Stixay very low. Oh, true shot barrage. Bang, anticipating where who he was going to dash to. He's got him. And now SKT pushing in onto this inhibitor turret. Who he very low. Double kill now for Bang. Bang has been unleashed, man. Another big ult for, from Darshan before he dies, but didn't stop Bang. Just going to wait for his team to catch up, and they're going to easily get an inhibitor out of this, and they may get a little bit more, actually. This might just be it. I mean, CLG, the, their big problem here is that they just yeah. didn't do anything in this game. They had the nice trades early on. They played out their script very well. This is a team that is knowledgeable about how these how these early lane swaps are going to go, yep. what plays they can make. But when they're off script, they just couldn't compete with SK Telecom. They couldn't make the plays, and then SKT outscaled them. And that is it. GG, SK Telecom taking out CLG in our first game of day number two here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championships. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't really the most perfect game from SKT. It was good. It was methodical. We didn't see maybe as much pressure from Blank as we want to. But I got to say, you know, after seeing all of his games in Korea, that's probably the best game I've seen from Blank yet. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he looked much more comfortable this time around. Remember, they've been scrimming with this guy probably nonstop for the last two weeks. We have never seen SKT play on patch 6.3. And they actually pull it out here in the in the first game. Yeah, uh, man, Bang. Uh, we're looking at the the damage uh, in the post game report, and Bang did a lot more than everybody else. Yeah, uh, eighteen thousand damage. Yep. So by far the highest amount in this game. So it's a good start for SK Telecom, but you know the, it's more than just winning that first game. We need to see you know what they're going to do later on the day if they can get through with that 2-0. I think that's what a lot of people are expecting, but it's really not over till it's over. You know. No, it isn't. And I, I still think CLG is a team that could easily get out of this group. When I, I, when I take a look at their lane swaps, especially compared to a team like the QG Reapers, they have a huge advantage. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what they can do a little bit later in the lower side of the bracket. For now, we're going to send it over to the expert desk to see what they have to say about that game. Thank you very much, Doe and Monty. And uh, let's start with some picks and bans talk. Uh, I was a little surprised with Darshan on the poppy, going a little bit more towards maybe the team fight style. Was this something that you guys were expecting, or how surprised were you? Let's start with Kamal. <laughs> I mean, we kind of talked about that before the game. Like 20 minutes of CLG spike pushing. Y yes, I know. But seeing Thanks how for paying attention. Out, hey, man. The plan of them going with the poppy. I mean, to just surprise like so everybody. To, to what get is it, your opinion now that you've seen in it? In CLG's mind, likely they went for the poppy because they didn't think there was a pick left that really would do well into it. Yes, maybe Quinn, but they were planning on chain ganking that. But it all fell apart when Darshan went in the... Uh, he I mean, a minion, and then Xmiffy was doing Scuttle Crab and Ward. I'm like, it, okay, We actually yeah. have a replay of that first blood if it is ready. Um, I don't know if production's ready for me, but pull that one up on screen, and then uh, you Deficio, start us off, because you started talking about the first blood, and then the lane swap as well. Uh, yeah, so SKT actually surprised me here. I think they understood the Western lane swap after the World Championship, where they actually adapted to it really well. Here they're going to make some mistakes. First of all, before we roll the clip, look at your minimap. You're going to see in the bottom side how a wave is being built up by Stixa and Aphromo being pushed in. That is one wave SKT has to react to by either mirror what they're doing or going down and defend a lot earlier. This is an outplay from Bank, but it's also because X Mithy was supposed to join in a lot earlier. Yeah. He was doing Rift Scuttler. He was. It's not an outplay. I mean, Darshan it eat it a clean. Sure, but like, okay, it was a massive misplay, but it was also a miscommunication. This is the play though with the lane swap where SKT is, is failing completely. You're supposed to mirror what CLG is doing right now and do the same thing on the top side of the map, or you're supposed to defend this a lot earlier with your support. Yeah. Right now, Wolf is level two and he's ganking mid lane. Why are you ganking mid lane in a lane swap? Because in a free tower here. Usually when you watch Korea, people don't make a force display and they kind of settle it in this farm fiesta. But this and play happened at Worlds over yeah. and over and over. So I was super surprised that SKT actually fell behind here. It's, it's been the one place where Western teams had the advantage at this tournament. It is in the lane swaps. And they actually were supposed to fall further behind if it wasn't for Dashaun yeah. hitting a minion with his uh, E mm. and of course, X Mithy doing Rift Scuttler while the engage actually happened. So he was just and then he stopped, time. he stopped to do a ward. And that's just it. Like, if CLG's strategy, yes, they can get a mild advantage by getting another tier two in the bot lane, but it stands and falls with Darshan being stronger than whatever he's put against. Because CLG will not break open in the foreman area of their squad. They need to win that matchup somehow, and they completely butcher it by sending two people top, failing that gank, and costing them a teleport on cooldown too. And that is 
a crucial area that we're not used to seeing, at least from Darshan. And it, for me, that play, that single play, cost not didn't cost them the game, but it cost them a, a good chance of, of even like coming close to winning it. I just really dislike the poppy pick to go back to your pick and ban uh, talk, because first of all, you give it, you, you show it in first rotation. I don't think poppy has high enough value to be picked super early anymore when there are so many other good picks in top lane, like Trundle, who's appeared in this tournament. Quinn, we know, is there. You can flex certain things like Lissandra if they've needed. I don't think Poppy should be early picked, especially not if your team is built around split pushing, because yeah. Poppy, yes, she has a good laning phase. She can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most things, but she won't really kill anyone. Well, to fish your, in the hold game. that thought. Faker is standing by on stage with Sharks to talk about their first victory at the World Champs. Thank you very much, Trevor. Indeed, joined by Faker and Susie to assist with the translation. Congratulations, Faker. Fantastic first victory here. In your own words, can you tell us what you thought of CLG's composition and gameplay in this one? Uh, 우선 저희랑 CLG 모두 포킹 조합이었는데 어, 좀 저희가 조합상 좀더 강력하다고 생각했고 어, 그래서 좀 후반 갈수록 저희한테 좀 힘이 들어간 것 같아요. He said, uh, CLG and our team comp, we both pick poke comps, right? But um, as we went into the late game, I think our picks were a little bit stronger, and so we were able to pull out that win. And that is a great first victory here on the stage. You guys chose to come here with Blank. We've heard of the uh, issues and probably why not, why Bengi isn't here. How was it the first game with him and the first experience on the stage? Uh, <coughs> 좀 로이 챔스에서는 안 좋은 모습을 보였기 때문에 이번에 어떻게 될지 몰랐었는데 이번에는 그때와 다르게 좀더 어 긴장하지 않는 모습을 보여서 저희 팀이 어 로이 챔스 때보다 더 강력해, 강력해진 것 같아요. He said, uh, Blank, when playing in champions in Korea, he hasn't really shown great results. But, you know, so he was a little worried coming in here, perhaps Blank won't play as well. But it feels like he's less nervous while he's on this stage. And uh, he did very well. He's happy with that. Oh, good first game. The last time I talked to you, Faker, was after you lifted the cup and won the World Championship over in Berlin. A lot has changed for your team. What's your general feeling on how your team has been doing so far and how you are, how your synergy is? Oh, 일단 제가 팀이 변하는 거를 몇번 겪어봤기 때문에 이렇게 변하더라도 어느덧 나중에는 좀 좋은 모습을 보일 거라고 생각하는데 일단 지금 저희 상태가 좀 로이템스의 상태로는 다음 롤드컵에 못 나갈 것 같아서 어, 좀 이번에는 어, 1위 멤버로 좀 나갈 수 있게 노력해야 될것 같아요. He said, uh, I've been through a lot of team changes before and, you know, so I know how to adjust to them. Right now, we're not doing very well in Champions. I don't think we're going to make it to Worlds this year. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, he hopes that they're able to keep this team roster and just work harder and show better results. I would like to ask a follow-up to that. That is a big statement coming from the current world champion to say that you might not make it to the world championship. Could you tell us a little more? 한국에 너무 잘하는 팀이 많아서 저희가 지금 상태로는 못갈것 같은데 아마 제 예상대로는 올해도 나갈 수 있지 않을까 생각해요. All right, he said, well, right now, I don't think we're going to be able to make it to Worlds. Okay. But, um, you know, there's too many good Korean teams at the moment, but in, in the condition that they are right now, he doesn't feel that they're going to make it, but perhaps as they work on towards the next season, they might be able to at least, you know, be a part of it. Yeah, this tournament can, of course, also help. We saw TSM yesterday growing throughout a whole day of games. Mata said after them making it to the semifinals that he would love to play you guys. What do you think of that possible matchup? Uh, 어 로얄이랑 몇번 연습을 연습 게임을 했는데 그래서 마타 선수가 만나고 싶었다고 했던 것 같고 저도 사실 언젠가 만날 적이라고 생각하는데 왜냐하면 좀 잘한다고 생각해서 어 그때 만나면 아마 저희가 이기지 않을까 생각해요. He said, uh, I think Mata said that because we've been kind of playing against them and practicing a lot together. Um, and, you know, I think it would be good because I think Mata's a very good player and I would like to play against him. But I think if we did meet later on, we'll probably beat them. All right, well, we will see. Thank you very much, Faker. Congratulations, our first victory from SKT and some very interesting statements from the man himself. Back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Sharks. Congrats to Faker and SKT. We'll talk about the statements in a moment or two. Uh, I do have a replay that I want to pull up onto your screen. It was uh, a double teleport from Duke and Faker into the middle and catching Huhi out. And then it felt like it was the, the tipping point from where the game was 
maybe even. And then SKT just took complete control to Fischio. Yeah, in my opinion, SKT has the better composition because they actually have to spray pushing opponent in Trundle, so they have all the pressure. And CLG is forced to take team fights to really win and like catch off targets with the poke they have from the locks coming in. We can just roll the clip and this just means SKT after this fight can do everything on the map and just have full pressure. It is actually double TP on the wall to see behind CLG when they're pushing tower coming in from from SKT, and at first it doesn't even look that great. The ward is supposed to be placed here. Who is supposed to click it? And then Afro can flash with him and get out. But they are placing two wards on, on the lantern itself, and that's why he can't click it. It's, we it's saw from Eddie though on Twitter, apparently yeah. you can actually click a button and then you ignore the wards and you can still follow it out. Yeah, if you, if you click the attack champions only, you can click that ward. But like, for, for from SKT, the play itself, uh, the turnout was good, but the, the setup was punishable by CLG because a lantern being cast in an instant click by who you usually like if support for example pings lantern lantern gets thrown and you spam click in that area you're quicker than whatever ward comes down and then Afrim can fly out so that was a very risky play yeah by SKD at the same time though they will never really lose too much on the map because they as the features just said they always have that split push component and that's why CLG were struggling to make some of these panning picks and even those weren't really working out like Smithy to the bane of, uh, of the Fischio here. Multiple times went in with Body Slam, and then he either threw a barrel on his Q first or tried to auto attack instead of instant ulting, and that we have to criticize that. If you play yes. Dragus, you go for a pick, you do E into R. You don't do any fancy shenanigans, no Q in between, no auto attack, because that allows a small window where people just spam flash and they will get out. And Two pickoffs were failed, where a hook was prepared from Aphromo, where Xmiffy was setting up for a gank, and he just ended up throwing them outside of the fight instead of yeah. in, the, in the fight because of like And he's what? done it before. Yeah. Like, that's almost the worst, because I would assume they've gone back and looked at the game and said, why didn't we create a pick here? Oh, because we wanted, what is it, 50 or 100 extra damage from the Gragas. That small, small window where you're knocked up from the body slam, don't auto-attack him, don't put down a Q, just ulti him back straight yeah. away. It's huge mistakes that end up costing you, because if you look at what SKT could do, they could actually catch out CLG multiple times. Stix A got caught, Aframu got caught, and that just gives so many kills. Got a replay of just oh, those got more sorts replays. of things ready for you guys. Pull the third replay up onto your screen, because after SKT pulled ahead, this starts with Faker getting caught, and you think, oh, maybe this is bad, roll a clip out, and... All of a sudden, bang, it happens. I because like the mad life here from Afro. Yeah, this is so absolutely big. insane, though. Like, pulling a mad life on Faker, that is, that is the counterpart of what we were talking look about. Look at Gragas, look at Gragas. Yeah. There we go again. He body speed slams up. in, auto attack. Okay, it's hard to see, right? Body slams, he didn't. Has the auto attack instead of just ulting back instantly, and that's why they can flash away. The counterpart of those failed plays, though, was that ma beautiful mad life hook from uh, um, Afro move. But overall, just the way Bang has been playing, his snipes, he's. Completely mind game Stixay twice right now. Every time he as well ulties, he does it just slightly to the right of Stixay. Watch here, like slightly to the right. Oh, panic dash right at the tip. He goes down, and that's just you're in your opponent's head. You know exactly yeah. what he's gonna do when he sees that coming. And basically, yeah. if if you stay at the tower there to dodge it, Nidalee Spear will probably follow and just hit you in the face, yeah. and then you die. But also in this case here, because the the Gragas engages didn't work due to Misplay. the mechanics we just talked about. When Poppy is sitting in side lane, which she has to, to try and hold the lane, there's no threat of killing Bang anymore other than landing a Lux Binding. He goes QSS, third item, he has a Lulu to buff him. So as soon as the body slam fails from, from Xmithy, Bang just jumps forward. He's like, oh, stick say, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill yeah. this guy, this guy. No one can kill him other than like a random Poppy home guard, maybe smack him into a wall, but that's a misplay then from Bang instead of an outplay from CLG. We have to credit SKT though, because we were going a lot like CLG did this and this and this wrong. It takes almost no hesitation um, from SKT to go in for that punish. Bang knows in, yep. he knows exactly his limits, he knows what he can do, uh, how his teammates can protect him. Very often we see, you know, Frost Queens being popped as well from a Faker just that zones out enemies and then Bang just steps into that zone and uses it to, to his advantage. They play so well with this comp, that's why Lulu is the most played champion for Faker. Yep. So often they paired up with the Israel, they're fine giving away early Lucian picks to take that. So it gives them a lot of flexibility in the pick and ban phase with these picks. I think Lulu is one of those you probably have to ban away because the synergy between Faker and Bang in this case means that you have so little room for errors. And we saw some from CLG, and that's how, why they end up losing. We'll see if uh, anybody else agrees and decides to ban Excuse that uh, Lulu out later in the day. For now, CLG, they drop down to the loser's bracket. SKT advance to the winner-decider match. Uh, we're going to head to an ad break, and when we get back, we'll set up QG Reapers taking on Fnatic. <laughs> 